Hi everyone, it's Miss Brenner. Today I want to talk about some notes involving dystopian societies. I want to talk about what is a utopia, what is a dystopia, what makes them different, and how do they function. So we're going to start off with what is a utopia. So a utopia is a place, state, condition that is ideally perfect in respect of politics, laws, customs, and conditions. So I oftentimes think of the Wizard of Oz and the Emerald City if I have to try and come up with an idea of what would be a perfect utopia. This shiny place where everyone is happy all the time and there's really nothing bad that could happen there. So a utopia is perfect because the government is perfectly functioning. It is working to improve society's standards of living rather than the living of the leaders themselves. The social aspects of the community run perfectly because everyone perfectly respects one another. There is no war or disease. There's only peace and happiness in a utopia. Everyone outside the utopian society looks to this place in wonder, believing it to be completely perfect in every way. Now, it's oftentimes difficult for us to form an idea of what living in a perfect society would be like because oftentimes as we grow older, we realize how difficult it would be to form a utopia because what's perfect for us might not be for someone else. And that is why we have such a huge genre of dystopian societies. It's much easier for us to say what is not perfect than to imagine what is. So what is a dystopia? A dystopia is the opposite of a utopia, for starters. A dystopia is a futuristic, imagined universe in which an opposive power controls its citizens through the illusion of a perfect society. So it is not a perfect society because we are able to, as the reader, understand what makes it um, either inherently evil or imperfect but it creates this illusion for the characters within the story. So how can a dystopia appear perfect? There's a couple of ways. Oftentimes in a novel, what appears to be a utopian society at first is actually revealed to be a dystopian society. So usually the society itself appears shiny and good on the surface. It's not until you get a couple chapters in that you start to realize how it got to be uh, pretty on the surface and not so great underneath. How can a dystopia appear perfect? Well, another way would be the citizens are often revealed to live in terror. Um, they're not willing to admit that they are unhappy or living in a way that is not satisfactory. They're under complete control by the government and are unaware of the corruption and lies. So they either prefer to lie to themselves and pretend that they're happy or they are actually unaware of the terror that's happening under the surface. Another way is the citizens are suffering and are miserable, much like in the Matrix. They don't know that they are suffering because of these lies. So, um, like I said before, they're either putting themselves into the lie and are forcing themselves to accept the lie or they are completely unaware of it happening around them. All right, so dystopias through an illusion or an exaggerated worst case scenario make a criticism about a current trend, social norm, or political system. Dystopias are as frightening and as shocking as they are because they take something that is happening in our real society and make it as big and as eccentric as possible within the story. There are nine characteristics of a dystopian control that I'd like us to talk about in this beginning part of the notes, um, since they are the elements that I believe are the most connected to our real society. And I'm going to go over each of these nine individually. So first is propaganda. It's used to control the citizens of the society. So in a dystopian society, they'll have all kinds of different propaganda telling you to do or don't do something. Um, Big Brother is watching. They're going to somehow try and control you through a government figure. And 
we have propaganda in our own world on a regular basis. I know a lot of people think back to like World War II propaganda, uh, but there's definitely plenty of it in our own world and you'll see that a lot on social media. A second form is information, uh, dependent thought and freedoms are restricted. So just like banning books um, or getting rid of information, erasing it from documents is a form of dystopian control used in novels to make sure characters don't learn or aren't aware of certain things happening so that way they won't miss it or they won't understand. Um, and that happens in our own world. Books are banned so that way people won't read those things and then they won't think about it. A third characteristic of dystopian control is a figurehead or concept is worshipped by the citizens of the society. So if we can create this all-powerful figure in society, which some societies do, um, they feel that the citizens won't fight back because they believe so strongly that they are unworthy or unable to fight back. And that is one way to control a group um, in a dystopian society. A fourth way is citizens are perceived to be under constant surveillance. So sometimes people have told me that they feel that Google is listening all the time. Obviously, Google does listen to you when you ask Google to do something, but Google tends to be aware of what you're about to ask it sometimes before you actually do. And that might be because your phone, your computer, um, other electronic devices, Alexa, things like that are listening. And is that always good? It's a dystopian control maybe to consider. Number five is citizens have a fear of the outside world. So we're seeing this more and more with technology as great as technology can be. Sometimes it uh, causes people to not want to interact with each other. Um, this concept of swipe left if you don't want to talk to somebody because you apparently already know them even though you've never met them before. Um, this concept of putting on um, an electronic goggle set so that way you can see the world that you've never been to. And as interesting and as wonderful as that can be at times, it also can be a handicap where we convince people to avoid the outside world. And that would be a dystopian control. Number six is citizens live in a dehumanized state. So I don't know if you guys have ever seen this YouTube video. I'm not going to play it for you now. Um, but if you go to YouTube, if you're curious, the model that is on the right hand side was actually a piece of pizza of maybe like 30 minutes before the person doing Photoshop uh, edited it. So that model is not real. She's not a real person. Um, she's actually a piece of pizza. And I think it's shocking how easily Photoshop can make you believe that somebody should look a certain way um, and dehumanize the value of a human being. All right. Number seven is the natural world is banished and distrusted. So um, my number one example for this is that uh, back during World War II, nylon was a huge product that was being used and trusted. And then along came this product called hemp. Hemp was a more cost effective product. Hemp was a stronger, more useful product. And that really scared a lot of large companies. They knew that if hemp was marketed in the same field as nylon, then hemp was going to sell better. Hemp was going to be a better product. And so rather than, you know, trying to keep up with the times and create better products, they simply came up with a slogan and a campaign saying that hemp is bad, hemp is practically drugs, and therefore hemp never sold. And that is one way to banish uh, the growth and the improvement of society by saying that nature in the world is technically not a good thing and it was successful. So that would be a way to control a dystopian society. Number eight is citizens conform to uniform expectations and individuality uh, is considered bad. So a lot of times when it comes with social media, they no longer want you to be an individual, but they want you to be part of some kind of group, whether that be, um, you know, uh, my example is the Kardashians. Not everybody knows who the individual Kardashians are, but the majority of people know the name Kardashian. Whether it be good, whether it be bad, that's not the point for them. The point is that they are no longer individuals, but rather an identity. And so a lot of times people want to join these groups that make it more of an identity rather than being an individual 
and that would be a dystopian control. The ninth and final dystopian control that we're going to talk about is the society is an illusion of a perfect utopian world. So um, I'm sure you guys have seen plenty of these kinds of uh, Instagram photos where everything looks wonderful, so much better, like it causes FOMO, that fear of missing out on life. Um, and it looks so much better than what you feel yours is. But in reality, life just isn't that simple. Um, and some other pictures that I have like that is this idea of what different activities should be like, but what they're really like in reality. And as frustrating as reality might be, it's something that we have to accept. So those are my different dystopian controls that we will see throughout our unit and throughout the stories that we cover uh, in the future. All right, guys, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you later. Bye.